Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'll generate differential equations for the classic two-tank flow problem. So let me draw this system. There's the first tank, has a little opening at the bottom. And here's the second tank with another little opening at the bottom. And the first tank has an input to it, a mass flow rate, m dot in. OK, so let's describe a few of the features of these tanks. Um, we'll call this one 1 and this tank 2. Uh, the liquid in this one we'll designate as H1, its height. And that's relative to some midpoint of that opening. And we'll do the same for tank 2, H2. And let's see, this tank has area A1, this tank has area A2. And the orifices will denote as having areas A or 1 and A or 2. And out of this one splashes some liquid down into the tank below, and we'll call that mass flow rate m dot out 1. And this one has some liquid spewing out of it, and we'll call that m dot out 2. That all makes sense. And finally, the mass of the liquid in this tank we'll designate as m2, or m1 and in this tank, M2, so that's a 1. That should just about do it, and if we need anything else, we can always um, define things on the fly. Okay, so let's get started, and what we're after here are some differential equations that capture how the height of the liquid in these two tanks changes as this M dot in as a function of time. So we could be changing the flow rate going into that first tank. And we want to just see, uh, generate some equations that describe how the heights change in both tanks. So from a physical perspective, I think the easiest thing to do is to look at the mass flow rates. Uh, for the first tank, the accumulation of mass of liquid inside it is just m dot in minus m dot out 1. And for the second tank, it's m dot 2 is equal to m dot out 1, that's what's going into it, minus m dot out 2. Now, let's take a look at these two terms. I'm going to just use a, a general way of expressing those and say that the mass in the ith tank, either 1 or 2, is equal to the height of the liquid in that tank, HI, times the density of the liquid, times the area of the tank. And then if we differentiate that expression, we get this. Okay, so now we're getting closer to having to turning these things into differential equations in H, right? Because we can replace the MI dots with uh, expressions that have HI dots in them. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, for these two equations we'll have rho ai, oops, that should be an, a 1 now, not an i, rho a1 h1 dot equals m dot in minus m dot out 1. And for the second one, rho A2, H2 dot, is equal to M dot out 1, minus M dot out 2. Okay, if you take a step back and look at those equations, the left-hand sides look good. We have our H dots. We have the input on the right-hand side, that's M in dot. But we have these pesky M dot outs floating around. So we need to deal with that. Well, um, let's look at the volumetric flow rate of liquid coming out of either of the two tanks. We'll describe that, or denote that, as QI out. 
and that's you know in SI units that would be in a meter cube per second is equal to VI a orifice I where VI is the speed of the fluid coming out in again in SI units meter per second and A or I is meter squared so everything checks out um, we can turn this into an M I m dot i out just by multiplying through by the density of the liquid. Okay, so we can certainly substitute that expression into our h i dot equations up above, but really we've just traded m dot outs for v's. Uh, perhaps that's more useful, and it actually is. Um, Let's go to the next step, which is to try to get rid of, I shouldn't say get rid of, to try to transform the VIs into Hs. And to do that, I'm going to switch colors. And what we're going to do is, um, is look at A tank and use Bernoulli's equation. So if this is either tank, we could look at a streamline flow from some point A to some point, that's not an area now, that's just designation of a point, to some point B, which is directly on the output side of that um, orifice. And so there's a streamline, whoops, that's not a very good streamline. There's a streamline that goes like that from A to B, and we can write down Bernoulli's equation. And so let's do that in red. PA over rho G plus VA squared divided by 2G plus HA equals PB rho G plus VB squared over 2G plus HB. So this is something you would have studied in your fluids class um, in uh, mechanical engineering, typically. So let's go ahead and manipulate this equation a little bit. First, what we're going to do is we're going to make the assumption that VA, so the velocity of this point, is much, much less than VB, the velocity as the liquid is spewing out of the orifice. So that'll allow us to chuck that term. Similarly, we're going to say that HB is our reference height. And so we can set that equal to zero and get rid of that term. Now PA and PB are actually equal. They would both be equal to the atmospheric pressure. It doesn't really matter too much. It's just it matters that they're equal. And so we can remove those two expressions. Now we're down to something fairly manageable, and if you notice, it allows us to express V in terms of H. So now, um, I guess I'll go one more step, and I'll say that we have VB squared is equal to 2GHA. Now let's take what I just did in red and map it to our tanks up above in black. The VB is just the VI, and the HA is just the HI. So let me switch back to black. And what this gives us is that VI is equal to the square root of 2G HI. And we're pretty much there. I can now substitute VI into this equation and then substitute the M dot outs into these and I'm done. So I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit so I still can see a few things and I'll just make these substitutions. So MI out dot is equal to rho Oops, I need to substitute that out. Rho A orifice I 
times the square root of 2g hi. And now I'll substitute that into the uh, 2h dot equations right here. So we have rho a1 h1 dot equals m dot in minus ah and I'm going to do one more thing cd aor and I'll explain that in just a minute 2g h1 this should be a 1 so what did I just do with the CD? So the CD is the discharge coefficient. And what it captures is a couple things. Some errors associated with this expression. And some, I shouldn't say errors, but, but deviations from theoretical. And some deviations from theoretical in this expression. Those are typically modeled with two different coefficients. But then when you uh, substitute the vi into here, you can just multiply those two coefficients and, and create a single discharge coefficient. A typical value for CD um, is 0 0.6, 0 0.6 to 0.7 maybe. Sometimes you can get a little bit higher. It depends on the geometry of the orifice, how sharp the edges are or how rounded they are, depending on how you look at the world. Um, but we won't get into the numbers at this point, but you can just use this as a bit of a reference. So let's keep going with these substitutions. Uh, I am now on this equation. So rho a2 h2 dot is equal to cd rho a orifice 1 2g h1 minus cd rho a orifice 2 square root of 2g h2 and I believe I am done so I'm just going to go up for a minute and then back down just so I have a full page okay so I could take these two differential equations and put a box around them because they are exactly what I need um, before I say goodbye, though, it's worth just taking a look at these equations and thinking about what we would do next with them. You know, most of the motivation for this modeling work is for later work that we will do in uh, linear control design. These are nonlinear equations in H, in the heights. So if we were going to uh, use these for some linear design, uh, control design work, we would want to linearize these equations. And so to do that, we would have to find a nominal operating point. And what I mean by that is we'd have to find a consistent set of h10, h20, and m dot in zero that balance these equations when the left-hand side, the hi dots, are set equal to zero. So we'd set these two equations equal to zero. And then find this set of h10, h20, m dot in zero that balances the equations. That would be an equilibrium point. Um, at equilibrium, this equation is sort of interesting because, in general, those rows cancel out. But in equilibrium, when I set that equation equal to zero, we can see that what we have is a fixed relationship a fixed ratio between h1 and h2. That is, we have a coefficient here, I'll call it gamma 1, times the square root of h1, minus gamma 2 times the square root of h2 equals 0, where gamma 1 is cd times aor 1 times the square root of 2g. What this means is that for this system, in equilibrium, in steady state, once everything has stopped moving around, the ratio between h1 and h2 is always the same. Right? I could square both sides, or I could square, I could throw one of these over the other side and square both sides, and I would see that I have a fixed ratio between h1 and h2. So it's just sort of an interesting observation, and would be one of the things that you could use for checking the results of either your linearization or uh, subsequent control or simulation work that you do with this system. Well, that's about it. 
So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.